with David Laws, is chairman of the Education Policy Institute think tank and a former chief secretary to the Treasury. Good evening to you, David Laws. So, are you surprised how little there was here in for business? Not really. I think this was always going to be, uh, with Theresa May's um, very tenuous position in Parliament, a Queen's speech that basically had to focus on Brexit and then cut back all the other things that were going to be controversial in the Conservative manifesto because, frankly, Theresa May does not have the mandate to push those through and is still struggling to command a majority in the House of Commons, even with the DUP. So I think it was unsurprising that we got a really pared-down speech of this type. Now, as we were saying, uh, a third of the bills that are being presented here concern Brexit. Do you feel it's inevitable the government is going to have to adopt a, a softer line on things like immigration to get some of these bills through? I think there's going to be a, a direct uh, trade-off in the negotiations uh, with our uh, EU counterparties over this issue of access to open markets versus the deal that is struck over immigration. And actually... What is, it, what is going on over the next few years in the negotiations with the EU will in many ways be far more important than what is going on on the floor of the House of Commons, although obviously the Commons at some stage has to ratify the position that the government takes. But I suspect the next few years uh, the focus is going to be less on the House of Commons and more on that uh, negotiating chamber in the EU. What do you think this means, though, for the investability of Britain, the attractiveness of Britain as an investment location? I mean, before we went into politics, you worked in the city for many years. You've got quite a good yeah. handle on this sort of thing. Well, I was talking uh, to some people in business earlier today, and many of the businesses they represented are really blighted at the moment by not knowing what circumstances they will face in two, three, four years' time and appear to be, as a consequence, pulling back on a lot of investment and actually relocating some of their activities abroad. And I think some politicians predicted completely inaccurately that if the country voted for Brexit, the economy would sort of fall off a cliff the next day. That really hasn't happened so far, unsurprisingly. But actually, it's over the next few years, as businesses take their investment decisions, that the risks for our economy arise. And there is a real risk at the moment that people in business don't want to invest in our country because they have no idea what circumstances and what access to markets they will face in a few years' time. The more reassurance the government can give them on those issues early on in the next uh, months rather than years, the better it will be for our investment climate and for jobs. So, in other words, as well as uh, negotiating hard, the government really needs to get a move on and get some, some of these bills through quickly. Yes, it does. And it needs to set out a vision of Brexit, uh, which is realistic and which helps to keep open our access to trade and avoid just being locked out of the markets that we depend upon as a country for our jobs and our wealth. And if that reassurance can't be given to business, then there's a real risk of a downturn in investment and employment activity that will make uh, what's going on in today's Queen's speech and in Parliament look like, frankly, a sideshow because it is that negotiation over our future in the EU that is dominating the next few years, and the focus of a lot of that will be outside Parliament. Are you really worried, then, that, you, that there's genuinely going to be a fall in uh, employment in the near future? I don't know when it will occur, but I certainly think that there is a big risk that investment and hiring decisions over the next few years could be blighted by businesses not knowing what trading circumstances they face, and in some cases uh, reducing their risks by redeploying activities overseas. I think that's already happening in certain sectors, but some sectors are more prone to it than others. So uh, the risk was never going to be, in my view, the immediate aftermath of a Brexit vote. It was going to be during this period of uh, uncertainty and indecision when our businesses simply don't know what economic circumstances they face. It's rather like the blight of investment after the great crash and the chaos in the Eurozone where firms didn't really want to make investments in our country in the euro area because they didn't really know uh, whether even the currency could survive. And that sort of endemic uncertainty is what we could now face in the UK for a prolonged period. And it's why Theresa May's government have got to focus first and foremost on getting a clear position on Brexit and persuading businesses in this country that they can keep open uh, markets globally for British goods and services.
Now, lest we forget, the deficit, barely mentioned in the election campaign, barely mentioned in the Queen's mm. speech today, yet this is probably the biggest challenge, along with Brexit, the government faces, isn't it? It is. There is still a case for getting that deficit down. It's come down very significantly since its peak of £160 billion. Uh, but we've still got tens of billions of pounds imbalanced between what we're spending each year and the money we're collecting in taxes. We're still uh, adding to our debt burden. And that's a real risk if there is a downturn in the economy, because we could then find borrowing going up very rapidly to unsustainable levels. So it makes sense for us to go on reducing borrowing. But it's clear that the Chancellor and the government are going to face a very uh, tough set of circumstances in getting borrowing down further. Uh, the appetite now in some areas is to spend more on things like schools and hospitals. It's going to be very difficult to get unpopular tax rises through Parliament with no majority. So really, uh, the Chancellor has to hope that he can uh, avoid uh, having to spend too much more in some areas, avoid having to give away too much money in reductions in the tax burden. And he's got to focus on keeping growth going so that his tax revenues keep coming in and he can bear down on the amount of borrowing there is so he gets spending and tax revenues back into balance. We need to do that before we face the next uh, recession. And, you know, the, the, the economies yeah, always go through cycles. Yeah. yeah. Le, one last quick one. Uh, who do you fancy for the next Liberal Democrat leader? Oh, I'm not really um, uh, commentating, commenting on that. I, I don't think we even know who the candidates are yet. So uh, well, Vince let's see. We, we, we've got... A, we've got uh, I think some potentially very good candidates with a lot of literacy in economic matters who actually will be able to contribute something significant to the debate in Parliament. And I think that's a, a good thing, not just for uh, my party, but for the country to, ha to have people who can contribute to that debate. All right, David Law, thanks for your time there.